What's happening? Hello? What's up? What's up? What's, what's up? What's going on? Nothing. I'm on my ten hours, so you are on you know, your ten hours. You 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 little you little early to be on your ten hours, man. You're not supposed to be on your ten hours this damn early. What's going on? Um, I, I'm running recaps, and um, basically, I start at three in the morning. So oh, I only had ten hours on my clock today. Man, listen, listen, man. You, how how long you been driving? <laughs> how long you been driving? It's coming you? up to a year. Man, you you you, you you driving like you've been out here for like five years, man. You driving, getting up at three in the morning and and know all about the yeah, what time to start. What's up, man? <laughs> Get That's out how I of started. Here. I was always taught to like get up early if you want to get down early. <laughs> get out of here, man. Let's uh let's get it, man. Let's what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. Oh, we got a problem here. We got a problem here. We got a problem, nigga. Aja, Aja in the building. The rookie. The, the rookie. I, 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 I shouldn't even call you a rookie, man, because. You know, after <laughs> after the a, after watching your videos and everything, I, I shouldn't be calling you a rookie, man. I mean, you 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 talking like, yeah, I only been out here for a year, but I I got some uh, veteran tendencies, man. Let's uh let's get it, man. Uh, so <laughs> wow. So where 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 do we begin? Where where do we start? Where where do we start? Let's start with uh, what made you get into trucking, and 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 oh, let's man. and let's <laughs> and let's get into the to to the to the W E. And if people don't know what W E is, it's Western Express. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm <laughs> um, so trucking actually was my Plan B option. Uh, my Plan A was actually go to college and go for my doctorate's degree and also a PhD um, because I wanted to be a psychologist and own my own office. But, you know, we're looking at 10 years of college and just thinking about the cycle I would be in, I didn't want to get stuck in the same cycle everybody else is in where it's like, you know, they take out a loan and it's all this money and basically you're working your whole life to pay back that loan. I had a teacher who was like damn near 60 years old, she's still paying back her student loans. It's insane to me. So, you know, my brother is actually a trucker. Well, how do I call somebody that got their CDL, probably did their training and then stayed in the trucking field for a year, got an LLC, opened up their own company. And, you know, basically that's considered a trucker, I guess. Right. So with him, he, I used to watch him with his truck <laughs> and I used to be like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then from Amazon, because I used to be an Amazon delivery driver, which was hell. Um, I went into box truck and straight truck. And then I became a school bus driver after that. I was all over the place trying to figure out a career after I basically dropped out of college after a year. I'm not ashamed to say it. Yes, I dropped out of college. Um so, yeah, I just realized, like, damn, I really like to drive. Like, I would sit in my car and drive for hours to go absolutely nowhere, forget about the gas. So, you know, I started looking into trucking, and here I am. <laughs> A year later, here I am, living it out at the present. So your, so your plan <laughs> A didn't work out, and you made it, you made sure yeah. that you came up with a plan B. So you say your, your, your truck driving brother was your inspiration mm -hmm. to 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 get your CDLs and everything. Yeah, basically. I mean, I looked at him and I seen how much he was making. I mean, he does also multiple, like, a bunch of other things. But, you know, the truck driving thing, owning a trucking company was one of his biggest things that he wanted to do. So, like, watching him do that and seeing how successful he was with it, I was like, oh, this is, hmm, that's not too bad. And then also, I'm not going to lie, I'm an introvert. And one of my biggest dreams was to travel the world and, you know, see different sites. I'm a sucker for nature. So 
you know, it's just when you're in that truck and you're in your own mind, that peace of mind, I like it. I don't mind that solitude, that isolation, because that's how I practically am. So I just enjoy the sunrise and the sunset. I get to see both getting up at three in the damn morning. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. So what was, what, what was the, what was, what was the conversation when, when you, you came to your family, you came to your brother, like, Hey bro, you inspired me to get my CDL. I'm about to go and do it. What, what was his, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure he was supportive of it. Um, yeah, both my mother and my brother were very supportive of that. Actually. Um, my brother was a little worried because, you know, um, I'm a young female and coming out into the trucking world, it's a very dangerous job. You're putting your life at risk every day. And, you know, on top of what happened, not even just accidents, but also what happens at truck stops, you know, possibly getting robbed if you're in a dangerous area. But that's how, that's why you have to know, that's why you have to be aware of your surroundings and also know information on the truck stop that you're going to, because, you know, there's certain truck stops you shouldn't be going to. Exactly. Um, you know, he gave me the rundown on that. And my mom, she was like, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I mean, definitely. I want to commit, you know? And she was like, I mean, if that's what you want to do, if it makes you happy, go for it. You mentioned <laughs> that you, that you was driving school bus. So you, so you, mm -hmm. you had uh, a class B at one point, right? I did. Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So, but instead of 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 your class B, did you go to Western Express to get your class A, or or how did that how no. how did that come in? How did your class A come into play? So I actually went to Prime Inc. So I left the school bus company because with school bus jobs you only get really twenty five hours because you have to wait for the kids to go to school. You got to wait like four hours and then they come out of school. So there's a huge gap right there that you're not going to pay for. Um, it'd be a good job if they had more hours and I just wasn't happy. I had a passenger endorsement. And, you know, when I started studying for my permit, I, I studied for my permit on my own. Um, I had to make a decision, either go to CDL school or go through one of these companies, sign a contract. Because my brother definitely warned me of all the contracts and things like that that I should be aware of. But like I said, he's only been in it for like about a year. He only stayed with one company. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of that company. That's um, okay. So he himself didn't have much experience on going to multiple mega carriers and learning about all these different mega carriers and the lies that they have. Like, because he was telling me, oh, I should go to Swift. I should try out JB Hunt. Like he was sending me links and I'm sitting here looking at reviews. <laughs> I'm like, uh-uh, this don't look good. <laughs> um, so yeah, Prime Inc. is where I got my CDL at. And honestly, I'm not going to down Prime Inc. Because I never would have gotten my CDL without them. Well, let's, 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 let's talk mm -hmm. about, let's talk about Prime Inc. Sorry for cutting you off. Let's, let's, uh, no, you're good. let's, let's talk about Prime Inc. Uh, what was your what what was your overall experience there? You know, what was some what was some good points, what was some bad points? Because, you know, like I said, a lot of people that went through Prime Inc. and got their license, they they had a good experience with uh right. with Prime Inc. And then of course, you know, you got uh you got uh people that went there and that had bad experience. In the TikTok video right, though, right. you it sounds as though you had multiple trainers and I, I did touch on that in, in my reaction video. So what was your experience like uh, at prime during the, during the time to get your CDL? So with prime Inc, I could definitely say when you're in the process of getting your CDL, like just the CDL overall, you get one trainer and he basically trains five people on something called a training pad it's basically this separate area from the terminal where they specifically teach you how to back, you know, do alley dots, basically set you up for your CDL road test, which I have to say is a freaking amazing experience. Um, I made so many friends there. Uh, there are a lot of people that give up because it's a, it's a hard process. Um, you first have to go through, I believe it's two weeks of sitting in a classroom 
And basically, they just tell you the rules of the road through paper and everything like that. And then you also have to do um, the driving simulation machine, one of those. And then once you get through that part, you do have to pass that. You get a test. Once you pass that test, they push you onto the training pad and put you with that trainer with a group of other people. Um, I made two really great friends there that I'm actually still friends with to this day. Shout out to them if they're listening. Um, and yeah, that was just a pretty amazing experience. The trainer actually takes you out onto the road, you know, doing the whole driving thing. Now I asked that trainer if he could be my trainer when it comes to after I pass my, uh, my road test and everything. And I start, you know, going OTR and getting my experience up. And he refused. He said he, he doesn't really have like time to sacrifice for driving another student in his truck. Um, because with that, you have to stay with a trainer for, it's about a month, a month on the road. Um, and you can only go home if they go home. Mm. So if they don't go home, then, you know, you've got to find a way to get home. And if you do choose to go home, you have to basically wait for that trainer to circle back to you. So the person I got linked with, she was a woman and, um, she was just very controlling. I hated the way she spoke to me. It was absolutely ridiculous. She would raise her voice at me. Like if there were certain stops coming up, she would yell at me over the stupidest things like um, me parking too slow because she had to take a crap. I felt like that's literally one situation that she screamed at the top of her lungs at me for. Um, And, you know, I'm just learning how to back. And then now that I do actually know how to back, watching the way that she taught me, she's been in the game for four years. Um, Her ego was really big. So she kind of thought she was like the shit on the road. Excuse my language if I can't say that. Sorry. But um, yeah, that was basically her, her, and definitely her pride and everything. So when it came to backing, the way she would teach me would be like she would stand in front of the truck and basically point in the directions that I need to go in. But the thing is, you're not teaching me to stick my head out the window. You're telling me to watch my nerves. That's something Prime is kind of notorious for teaching their rookies to look at their mirrors when that's not true at all. You should be watching the corner of that tail a hundred percent. You're not going to see everything just looking at mirrors when you're backing. You have to stick your head out there or, you know, some people open the door and do the utmost, but you know, however, whichever way is comfortable. Why? Did you do the get out and look? Did they, did, did she have you to get out and look? No, she wasn't teaching me that. I actually didn't learn that until Western, believe it or not. Um, and that's where I like, I kind of gave up on her because she <laughs> she would actually sit there and tell me stories about how she'll drop her students off in the middle of nowhere and she wouldn't care because she felt like they were disrespectful. So I spoke to the DM and I told him I wanted a new trainer, you know, because she just she's not respectful and I can't deal with this and I can't learn this way. And he gave me an attitude. Mind you, every DM is linked up with their drivers, so they have a relationship, basically. Like, they already know each other. And every time I had something to say about her, he would just basically defend her and be like, well, she doesn't seem, I mean, a lot of people have told me that she's a great trainer, you know? And I'm just like, dude, (laughs) she has literally dropped off like five people in the middle of nowhere. (laughs) Like, I don't know if, I'm sure he knew that. I'm sure. But, you know, to them, it's not that big of a deal because, you know, you literally just move on to the next rookie. Then that's exactly what happened. That's that favoritism. That's that's that favoritism right there. It absolutely is. And she definitely knew how to play it sweet. You yeah. know? She knew how to play it sweet. I can tell you that now. She knew how to. Um, she wouldn't shower for four days at a time. <laughs> I was wait, my wait, stomach because I was just like, you know. Wait, what? What? I, I, what? what? I put it on everything. Put it on my life. What? Wait, we're talking about a woman time. here. Was she what? Yeah. I mean, I hate to ask this question, but what was her nationality? I already know what you're gonna ask, and yes, she was. <laughs> yes, she uh, was. <laughs> so, so she, so she yes, was she Caucasian. Was. <laughs> yeah, she was. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! And you know, I don't. With her, her explanation for all that, and I'm not gonna sit here and act like we didn't have chances to take a shower. We absolutely did. There were many times where we were at truck stops and she just would refuse 
to stop at the truck stop or, you know, take time to actually go take a shower because she'll be like, oh, her one excuse was, I'm a hard runner. I like to sleep in the, you know, the corporation parking lot, you know, wherever the distributor's parking lot is. She liked to spend the night over there. And, you know, her basic nighttime routine was use a wipe, brush your teeth, go to sleep. Honestly, me, I can't live like that. Like, I could do two days without a shower, but I do try to get in a shower anytime I can, every other day, or at least every day if I can. You know what I'm saying? Or at least take like a, I like to call it a whole bath. <laughs> Where it's basically, it's a, it's a bowl of water and you get some soap. You know, you get another bowl of water to rinse yourself off. At least you can be somewhat clean. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm familiar. I'm 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 familiar with the bird baths. Well, I, I guess right, you. Right. I guess you guys <laughs> call them whole baths. We, me, I call them bird baths. I I know bird about baths. the I know about the wipes. Yeah. That's what I got. I I tell everybody all the time. Right. That's what I got a gang of baby wipes in my truck because I know I'm going to be mm -hmm. somewhere that I'm not going to. Right, I'm not going to be able to, you know, get that good shower in. But I mean, right. when when you're when you're in a truck with somebody, and I and again, shout out to Ali Pants because she did a TikTok about uh about uh the 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 what was that the partner? I don't know if it was her partner, but she was just simply saying, "Hey, look." It, Show some respect, man, because if that body odor is kicking, you gotta you you gotta know that you got another person in that truck with you and you 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 not feeling mm -hmm. some kind of way like you you how was the how was the how was it in the truck? I mean you over here talking about she haven't took a shower for like four five days. Now I'm like, not gonna lie. Hey there trucking friends, how's it going? It's been a while since I have visited with you all. I wish I were here uh, under better circumstances for sure, but this is going to be a PSA. So um, buckle up because <laughs> I'm probably going to be pretty rude. I'm going to try really hard not to be, but no, nah, I'm probably going to be pretty rude. Like I'm, sh I'm like five, 500% sure I'm going to be really fucking rude right about now. Uh, so here's the thing. If you are a trucker, especially if you're a trucker who has to team with somebody, you need to take showers more frequently than every week and a half. There are showers avail available everywhere. You, you have to do something. Maybe even flushable wipes in between. Okay, you have to. You cannot subject your teammate to your stanky, nasty fucking ass and then cop an attitude when they politely say, hey, I'm going to be a little extra long here. Plenty of time for you to get a shower in and then I will clean up the truck and air it out so we have a nice clean ride. Yeah, don't cop attitude. If you smell so fucking bad, so fucking bad that somebody has to say something to you, that's a problem. And another thing, when you're out here, this is not the place for you if your idea behind not taking a shower is, uh, quote, I don't take showers, I take baths. Hand over your CDL, hang up the keys, and go find another job. That ain't the reality out here, and no one should be subjected to the kind of body odor effervescing from every fucking where on top of the vape that you can't stop fucking huffing because you know you smell that bad. Your co-driver should not have to freeze their ass off to have the windows down just so that they can breathe around you. I, I mean, I just, I just, I just can't. So take the PSA, wash your fucking ass, get some fucking flushable wipes, do yourself and everyone around you a favor, and keep yourself clean. It'll be good for your health, and it will also be good for your work environment, okay? Just saying. Thank you. Have a nice day. I'll see you guys at some point in the future. Surprisingly, I didn't smell nothing. Like, you don't smell anything at all. She was a very small woman, very petite, so, you know, 
maybe that has something to do with it. But yeah, there was no BO, surprisingly. But still, it's just like, how can you sit like that all day for 11 hours a day knowing you didn't shower? <laughs> like, And then, you know, you're dealing with the trailer. Sometimes you got to get under there. Sometimes you're dealing with mud. Sometimes you're dealing with dust. I feel gross the moment I step foot into this truck knowing I was outside doing all that work like that. Mm. So, you know, it, I can't do that <laughs> respectfully. <laughs> You say you can't do um, it like that. You need to get some water on that ass. That's what you're saying? Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Get some soap in there, too. It ain't just water. <laughs> I hear you. All right. So uh, you said about a month. So that's about, you know, what they were saying uh, that you got to at least do about 50,000 miles. So that that is yeah. about a month or so. 50, uh, give or take. I, I so, mean, me personally, I think that's still a little bit too long to spend with, with, with somebody. But yeah, it's um, it's uh, when I went, it was thirty k. They just recently pushed it up to fifty k. I still have some friends in Prime, actually. So, um, it's crazy how long it took them. Four months later, I'm four months into Western Express at this point, and they're just getting their trucks. So the thing that they don't explain to you. And which is which is why I stress so much on my content, read fine print, because I made that mistake of not doing that. The process is you go through about, I want to say, three weeks of doing the CDL training. You do your road test, you know, then you get on the road with a trainer. They don't tell you that sometimes the trainer is not always available. So sometimes you're stuck waiting for a month. It has happened. Um once you get on the road with that trainer, you have to complete 30K miles. If you get three critical events within the span of that 30K miles, which I have to add, Prime is very strict and their sensors are very sensitive. Um, you know, you get too close to a car in front of you, you know, beep, 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 critical event automatically. It gives you no chances. So you're bound to mess up, especially as a rookie, you're bound to mess up. Um, you know, they call you every time you get a critical event. So once you get three, you get another 10K added onto that 30K. So now it pushes up. Yeah, it pushes up and you have to complete that. Now, once you're done with that process, you know, you do the whole thing with all the miles. Um, you go onto a waiting list for a truck. Now, sometimes you have to wait a month, maybe two months, maybe three months for a truck. Their trucks don't come in just like that. You know what I'm saying? They detailed now when they give you the truck, it's brand new. Are you getting are you getting paid while waiting for a truck? So that's what I'm gonna get to. So in order to get paid while waiting for a truck, you have to ride with your trainer. So basically it's team driving at that point. At any point in time you choose to go home, say you want to go home and wait for the truck, you are no longer getting paid trainer pay. Trainer pay was six hundred a week. Dead flat, six hundred a week, mm. and that's it. So, in order to in order to continue to get paid, you you have to stick it out with whatever trainer yeah. that's available, mm -hmm. or the trainer yeah, that you are with. The trainer that you are with, the one that was training you all that time. So now, at that point, it becomes team driving. Okay, mind you, they're still getting paid. They're still getting paid extra for having you that whole time and you're still only getting 600 per week now i'm not going to sit here and act like trainers don't go through what they go through but a lot of these trainers are out here just specifically for the money and not to actually teach people right right you know what I, I hear so that a lot with i prime. dealt with that at western it was crazy with western because i didn't learn crap <laughs> from western i mean i learned a little bit talking to other drivers there I learned a lot more being in the real world, by, real world by myself, talking to other drivers. That's how I learned all this information. Shout out to all of them because they taught me the real deal. All these mega carriers, they didn't teach me anything. It was YouTube. It was talking to other truckers and truck stops. It was talking to a lot of seniors, you know, old timers and everything. It was talking to a lot of rookies. You're not going to get anything from these dispatchers. You're not going to get anything from the DMs. You're not going to get anything from speaking to, you know, the person that referred you, none of that. You got to actually talk to the people who have been doing this for years on end. Aja, I'm going to commend you for all of that, man. 
I, you know, I'm, 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 sitting, I'm sitting here enjoying the conversation. Like, here's a young lady that's that's only been in the game for a year and already got got so much knowledge that of uh, a person of a two year or three year that uh, that has. And here she is, one year in the game, and 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 sharing her ups and downs. You know what I'm saying? So. What so what happened with Prime? So you so so you got your CDLs. <laughs> That's a funny story. You, you got your CDL <laughs> from Prime, but right. but by the sounds of it, you didn't finish with Prime. No, so I didn't. so I you broke I broke that contract. <laughs> so you broke the con so you broke the contract. So what happened? What happened when you break the contract to 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 go somewhere else? Do they uh, do they come after you? What's what's what's, what's the process of you them would think. doing? <laughs> so um, basically, they tell you that if you break the contract, you owe them uh, to get this number right four thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars, right? So what they do probably about maybe two months when you're long and gone from Prime, you're probably found another job. They email you and they tell you, "Hey, you owe us da da da," and I'm not going to lie. I pay like $20 here and there. They have not done anything. They threaten you with it, but really they can't do much. A lot of people are saying, oh, they could bring you to court and, you know, they can, uh, they could put a hold in your license. I've been in doing this for a year. They have not touched my license once. And it's maybe because I am paying $20 here and there. It could be that. And maybe it's at the fact that, hey, I'm showing some type of effort. <laughs> but you know what? Let me let me interject right quick. Um, mm -hmm. I, To my understanding, and don't quote me on this, I, I, I got this information uh, third party, but uh, the the carriers can't do anything to your license. They, they can't blacklist you. They can't take it back. They can't put a hold right. on it or nothing like that. You when you get when right. you get your license, the license it's is yours. yours. Uh, the only right. thing the only thing they can do is probably you know put a put a uh, put a thing on your credit report, and that's as far right. yeah. that's as far <laughs> as it goes. Uh, maybe, as, as far right, as them or maybe trying mess to mess with your DAC report, right? No, no, not not like even that. not even that. You know? Not, not even that. Um, I, I know, like back in the day, like companies, like uh, I want to say, I'm not sure. I think it was either CRST or CR England that had the issue, uh, that had a lawsuit that was brought against them because the people that broke away they or broke their contract, the company wouldn't give the next company. Like if you need 160 hours that you got, they won't give that information to the next company. You know what I'm saying? They'll say mm. they they won't say, oh, okay, well, we can't give that information out because you broke the contract. It was some lawsuit. Right. I, I had to look it up, but yeah, it was some lawsuit. But as of now, modern uh -huh. times, because people breaking yeah. pe people break contracts every day. Hey, yo, hey, niggas get shot every day, B. You be all right, nigga. You tough, right? Every day. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing that it's, it's nothing that the mega carriers could do. The only thing that they can do is that they can just send it off to your credit report, and that's about it. But as far as your, as far as them doing anything to your license, that's, that's out. Right. Yeah, I was, um, I actually wanted to quote one of these videos that I see on TikTok and I, I wish I could remember that person's username because I want to give them the credit, but he basically explained mega carriers in the trucking industry and how it never used to be that way. And then one, once contracts got involved and everything, it kind of just ruined trucking as a whole. So he said, think about a fresh pail of water, right? You know, fresh spring water, it's nice and clean. And then you add one percent of complete trash into it. Just just waste. Would you drink it? Mm-mm. 
Mm -mm. Exactly. Water's already contaminated. That little, exactly. So he said that little one percent is mega carriers. The (laughs) the rest of that water is trucking. You know, just regular trucking and not having to deal with all the mega carriers. Just because they dipped their little hand into the trucking industry, everything has completely gotten destroyed. It really trucking experience as a whole, honestly. All right. Uh, so you 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 took um, took your experience, what little that you had, and you decided mm-hmm. to try your hand with Western Express. Now. I did a make the call video on Western Express, and yes, the recruiter does pour the milk. Like you'll get yes, this, do. you'll get that, you can turn around, you do, all that stuff. They do pour on the milk, but as you said in your TikTok, you know you have to definitely read the fine print because everything that the recruiter tells you will be BS. Um, before right. before you talk about your experience with Western Express, I did talk to another gentleman uh, about the so-called contract, not not the contract, mm. not the contract the you know to get your CDLs, but it's like another contract that you have to sign off. Like you got to agree to this certain amount of money coming out of your. Uh, checks for for hos reasons you got to sign off if the if 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 you go out of route all that stuff mm-hmm, tip, mm-hmm. tip a little yep. bit tip a little bit on on that did they bring all that up in the orientation and if so how did that make you feel when you when you was when you was uh being having that explained to you so at that time i was not reading contracts that's why I make my content so people can learn from my mistakes. Um, they don't say it verbally. It's something you have to read. They do take money out. If you do go out of route, I believe it's 50 miles. If you go out of route, which is why they want you to follow their GPS. You're not allowed to have a GPS unless you are leasing from them. If you are a company driver, you strictly have to use their GPS okay. and their GPS sucks if you know co-pilot that's the gps that they use uh-uh, uh-uh, <laughs> uh-uh. no I, I i learned the hard way when i was with us express that the qualcomm the the, the co-pilot <laughs> whatever whatever <laughs> system gps that they have for the truck not to follow that shit <laughs> i learned that mm-hmm. it's um but it was sadly the only thing you had, especially if you were, well, you got to think about it like this. When you're, when you're stepping into a company brand new, you got nothing. I didn't even have a hammer on my damn truck. Like, so I'm coming in practically naked. I have no type of material and I'm also vulnerable. I didn't know at the time to put my foot down. The first time I ever put my foot down was to my trainer in prime inc and she abandoned me in salt lake city utah when i live in new york paid six hundred dollars to get home and they didn't care not once so when i came into western Express, i didn't have anything no money at this point i'm just desperate to get some type of crap into my pocket without having to sit through you know four weeks of orientation and western express said oh okay come over here we got two weeks of orientation um no not even four days of orientation, two weeks of training, my bad. And, you know, you'll be solo. You'll be running solo. I was like, oh, wow, that's great, you know? And I'm talking to the recruiter, and the recruiter sounds honest. They sound very honest with what they're telling you. They sound like, you can trust me, you know, you can call me whenever you need me. That's how my recruiter was. Next thing you know, he disappeared. The moment, you know, I got done with orientation, I was no longer hearing from this man. I was, I had to pay for my own hotel because the hotel that they put me in was full. <laughs> they, they didn't reserve, I guess they didn't reserve the rooms or whatever. Um, so I had, I had to pay $110 out of my pocket plus $50 for an Uber to get to the hotel. It was just a whole mess and it took them about a month to reimburse me that money when I kept complaining and complaining. So with the whole, 
GPS situation, when you don't have any other thing to use, it, that's all you can rely on. You know what I'm saying? It, like, if you're not used to the trucking and what roads you can take and what you can't take, though they do teach you that when you're doing your CDL training, but, you know, you got some people that just, they're still trying to wrap their head around this whole thing. The only thing is trust the company, trust what they say, trust the equipment that they give you because there's nothing else. Luckily for me, I was already aware of Copilot. I already knew about it because I had an app on my phone uh, when I used to do uh, straight trucking in the city. Uh, Copilot was the GPS that they had me use. So I already knew about it, but I also had truck map and trucker path as well because Copilot would glitch out a lot on me. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. That's crazy. All right. So you, of, of course you had to go, of course you had to go back out with another trainer with, uh, mm -hmm. with you, uh, with, uh, Western Express. What was your experience with, uh, yeah. with him? Um, very lazy, laid back, young. So to start with, I requested a non-smoker. I hate cigarettes, but for him, he marked that he was a non-smoker. <laughs> like when I met him, I remember he was smoking a cigarette and he was like, I'm not a smoker. And I was like, but you're smoking a cigarette. And he's like, yeah, but I put it out the window and I barely smoke, but you're still a smoker. So I called Western about that. They said, well, you know, can you handle it? If not, you may have to wait a long time for another trainer. We don't have trainers on hands like that. And I'm like, oh, I'm not doing this weeding game again. Let me just stick it out. It's not that big of a deal, whatever. All right. So moving on from that, a lot of things that he taught me was the half-ass way. So, like, especially with distributing weight, he would always tell me it's like a seesaw, wherever the load stops, that's where you balance your, your tandem. That I learned that's not really the correct way to do it because it doesn't always work, especially with heavy loads. And in this fleet that I'm in now, I definitely get heavy loads. Like, I get 45,000, 46,000 pound loads. So that doesn't always work. Um, you know, with, with the co-pilot GPS thing, he taught me some tricks here and there, but he was also a lease operator. So he had his own GPS. So a lot of things that he was teaching me to do wasn't things I was allowed to do as the company driver. So a lot of it didn't apply to me. Um, and he was also way too busy trying to map with me than actually trying to teach me what to do on the road. It was more annoying than anything. But, like, that was really it when it came to him. I mean, you know, thanks to him, I got out of there. <laughs> I continued to do what I do, and I got a little better at backing because of him as well. He's the one who actually first started teaching me stick your head out that damn window. <laughs> watch the corner he actually used to like get a little frustrated with me because i was watching my mirrors for a good minute um but you know he he also had like his little aggressive moments he was jamaican so you know the the teachings can be a little aggressive but you know they'll get it through your head at some point in time so it was it was decent i'm not gonna say it was the best it was decent and i appreciate for what he did teach me now you know listen sitting here listening to you is is taking me back to 2014. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, everything that you talk about as far as the training and and the stuff that went on and how the trainers are, it's kind of reminiscent of what I went through, man. It's it's it is so crazy uh -huh. to hear this from a woman's perspective. Of course, I didn't get macked on, but but the trainer that I had <laughs> You know, I, I requested non-smoking. They gave me a smoker. And I I, uh -huh. I figured, you know, I was like, well, look, I'm not going to, you know, I waited this long. Uh, I'm not going to wait no more. Let me just go ahead and rock out and get this out the way. And, you know, you know, he, you know, he rolls down the window and try to keep the smoke out and all like that. Exactly. He was he was a weak trainer as well. He was a lease op as well. He was a, a new trainee uh, trainer. I mean, I, I had the trifecta going on with me. Like, I, I was new, brand new. He's brand new. And 
All he ever talked about was, you know, how much money he's not getting. Uh, 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 how 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 many times he was in the red and 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 stuff like that. But yeah, on your red flag or red. but on your situation, it was just the fact that dude trying to mack on you and 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 stuff yeah. like that, man. I mean, uh, so you you was able to rock out with him long enough to to right. get your own truck, though. Right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I wasn't fortunate. Very- what happened? I said I wasn't fortunate. <laughs> I, you know, oh, you know, I the the first trainer bounced on me, and I got my second trainer, but my second trainer got me through. But you, you are exactly right. A lot of the stuff that 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 they train you, especially if they are in one division, like for example, if you're an over the road driver, you don't want to be trained by a driver that's either driving regional or local. And that's the problem with with uh-huh. US Express at that time. They they had they had regional drivers training over the road drivers, and then they had over the road drivers training uh regional drivers, or not regional drivers, but like, you know, like dedicated drivers or local drivers. And everything that that we do over the road don't coincide with what would you do uh uh, local or something like that, and consider the fact that their local stuff is like uh, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, the Dollar accounts, yeah, uh, uh, Walmart accounts, Kroger accounts. You you're not going to be doing all the stuff that the OTR driver would be doing, and vice versa. So that was the problem that I that I kind of ran into with uh, US Express. But yeah, it's. You know, listening to you and 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 enjoying this conversation is just re- reminiscent of me of all the stuff I went through. <laughs> Whew, man! All right, so let's talk about it, man. Let's um, let's talk about the times that uh that Western Express kind of kind of dogged you out. You 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 mentioned that you had uh <laughs> that you had some you know something important to do. You you requested the day off, or you requested the the time off. They refused you, and you was like, "I'm this, I'm bouncing, I, I gotta go." And they and they tasked right. you for the fuel. What what happened with that whole scenario? Um. Well, first off, I want to apologize for the experience that you went through. That really sucks. But shit, look at where you at now. Of course, <laughs> living it up. Thank you. Thank. You. <laughs> Um, when it came to that, I actually had a funeral to attend. Um, and I let them know this about a month in advance. It was, uh, the load was going to Maine, Poland Springs. They are notorious for the Poland Springs. I don't know why. I think that's one of their biggest brokers. Um, excuse me, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's one of their biggest. I know that for sure. And they are very strict on getting there on time and make sure you get that load. And anytime I go into Massachusetts, Connecticut, anytime I'm in those two areas, I am definitely knowing that I'm going to Maine for a Poland spring load to bring back. Um, so they gave me the Poland spring load to go pick up, but see, I requested my day off for a Saturday. They told me to go pick it up on a Saturday. So I was like, I'm trying to call people. There's no weekend dispatch. They gave me the load last minute. So I didn't even have a chance to call. They like gave it to me towards the nighttime when I'm knocked out. So early Sunday, I mean, or early Saturday morning, I'm calling them. Nobody's picking up. Nobody's picking up. Nobody's picking up. At this point, I'm frustrated out of my mind because it's important that I get to the funeral. Like it's a family member. Are you kidding me? Um, I even tried texting my DM. She didn't pick up. Manager, nobody. So out of my own decision, at first, when I first did it, I didn't know the consequences. So I ended up deadheading back to New York. So um, basically what they do is they will restrict you fuel if, they know you're close to home. That's why they do you. If they know 
you know, you are possibly coming home, close to home time. I'm assuming a lot of people have deadheaded before me, which made them. God damn, Jimmy. This is some serious gourmet shit. Me and Vincent would have been satisfied with some freeze-dried taster's choice, right? <laughs> and he springs this serious gourmet shit on us. What flavor is this? Knock it off, Julie. Make that, like, kind of restriction right there. So that day, I was actually low on fuel. And they ended up giving me a few solutions for that particular load. And that load was actually going to... Where was it going? Pennsylvania. Um, so... I would have to go past home to get to Pennsylvania. It didn't even make sense. And I just ended up taking that few solution from that load. Once again, I am aware of what I did. <laughs> and I took my ass home, dead headed straight home. And, you know, they didn't call me until Monday because that's when everybody gets in. And they were like, oh, why did you deadhead home? Did you get the load? What happened to the load? And I'm like, I didn't get the load. I took the fuel solution though. Cause I told you guys I needed to be home for a funeral. And she caught an attitude with me and she's like, they're going to take it out of your check. And I was like, whatever, just do it. I mean, it is what it is. You know, I did try to fight it at first, but then I was just like, whatever, like just take it. I mean, my checks are already terrible. So it doesn't even matter. I'm only making like 700 a week. So it doesn't even fucking matter. Like at this point, I'm going to leave the company soon anyways. And that's when I noticed that I was actually in a contract that I wasn't aware of to begin with, which where you have to work for 160 days before you can actually leave the company or do whatever you choose. In other words, because then they'll charge you quote unquote. Mm. Um, you, now, hearing from other people's experiences, because I was doing a lot of research on Western Express and how to leave, I think I was desperate. Oh, my God. I was desperate. Let me <laughs> let me ask you this question uh, right quick. Um, let me ask you this question right quick, because, again, again, going back to my experience back in the day, woo, mm -hmm. I was in uh, <laughs> I, I was in PA. Um. I wasn't on a I, I wasn't on a load, but I was I, I was sitting at a I, I was sitting at a truck stop. I had fuel, and I was mm -hmm. like, "Shit, I I'm about a hundred miles, well, maybe about a hundred miles from the house." So, like like you, not knowing you know about the the consequences. I, I I went on ahead and dead headed to the house, posted up, mm -hmm. uh, took my thirty four, which I was off, which I was on. Every day, Monday morning rolls around, I get back in the truck, I get the phone call. Hey, uh, did anybody give you any authorization to uh, to you know the the go where you at? I was like. I'm sorry, what do, you, what do you mean authorization? Authorization for what? Well, you was in PA at, at the pilot trust stop. Why why you didn't why you didn't stay? Well, I'm I'm not uh -huh. that far from the house. I was only a hundred miles from the house, about a what a hundred miles is like sixty minutes about an uh, hour and twenty minutes. I I wasn't that far from the house. So uh, I I I came home to do my 34. Nah, you shouldn't have did that. What do you mean I shouldn't have did that? What do you mean? I'm 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 what? Well, it's unfortunate that we're gonna have to uh we're gonna have to doctor number one, they doctored me the miles, which was a hundred by mm -hmm. hundred and twenty, and and they doctored me the fuel. So I I was taxed maybe close to like four hundred, maybe about four hundred, five hundred, five hundred dollars. And I looked at that shit like, no, the fuck you, no, 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 no. I, I was only a, I was only an hour, and this is all new to me, like brand new because I'm, you know, I, 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 I just started solo, maybe about, maybe about three weeks, and this is all new to me, and you know, when I was fighting, you know, going back with the dispatcher, she was like, oh. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we we won't dock you. We'll just uh we'll just put this in your paperwork as as 
uh, a verbal or some shit like that. I, I don't know. But um, she said that next time you have to get authorization in order to, uh -huh. you know, in order to go or to move the truck or whatever, whatever. And I'm like, man, this is a lot of stuff that I got to get used to. You you know, I, I got to get used to asking for stuff like asking to go home and asking to drive the truck and asking to do this. Like, who who does this? Like, okay, I guess us truck drivers have to do all this now. So again, Aja, man, just I'm 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 enjoying it. Like I'm <laughs> I'm just having like <laughs> I'm just having like memories of grandeur right now, bro. Like, wow. You you and mentioned so like you mentioned you stay up in New York. Um, wow. Well, I, I tell you what. Before we go go to that part, go ahead and uh, finish up about you know about you said that wasn't the first time. Uh, you said no. it was like a couple of times. So you you talked about the first time. No, it was. Yeah, it was, and then there was one other time, and that was my very last week. Oh, that um, was the last where I week. That that yeah, was the one where you I talked about on your TikTok where you only got seventy one dollars. Yeah. Yes. Now I already know. <laughs> I okay. So this time I'm fully aware. Now at this point I've been with the company for seven months. I already know how they play their game. So I'm gonna roll the dice. So you know, with this situation, they had me. Now a lot of people don't know this because I didn't go into detail. They don't know the full story. But for that whole seven months, I was going through hell. Every single day was a problem. If it wasn't an exploding tire, which I have that on my um, my TikTok as well, you know, an exploding tire or doors broken on the equipment, like it was just always something. And my tire exploded at least three separate times in the span of being with that company. My first truck shut down on me he said the steering rod was bad and the dm knew about it and they still gave it to me anyways even though it wasn't deemed safe to drive so i had to practically demand the freight liner which did me justice but then it had a battery problem and they refused to change the battery out and you know a lot of truckers were coming at me for deadheading home that that day i quit because they said imagine you're a company, you put all this money into a person, a newbie basically running for you and you just spend all that fuel money going back home. Okay. I understand that. But imagine a company disrespecting you. Imagine a company stepping on you like you're a piece of crap, like you're mm. nothing to them. Mm. In the amount of time, I actually have some conversations recorded because at some point in time I wanted to take them to court. But I do have Adam Carpenter because I was based out of the Bethlehem Terminal in Pennsylvania. I have Adam Carpenter basically admitting, he did say it, that it is a forced dispatch company. He right. said that with his own words on the recordings. But I just never did anything with them because, first of all, getting a lawyer is a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, people say you could go pro bono, but that's a whole different story as well. Um, there's just a lot of receipts I do have. Um, but you know, just, I can't deal with a company talking down to me. Once I basically learned how to put a foot down to these companies and tell them exactly what I want and when I want it and how I should be treated. Cause at the end of the day, it's my clock. I run my clock. I run this truck. Sure. You may own it. Sure. You may pay the bills on it and whatnot, but at the end of the day, who's getting your loads out? It's me. Who's busting their ass out, risking their lives every day on the road? It's me. Who's away from their family all the time? It's me. You guys get to go home every day, and all you do is get up at damn near 6, 7 in the morning, don't come until 8 a.m., and sit your ass behind a computer screen all day and tell the drivers what to do. And you think it's totally okay for you to disrespect me, hang up the phone on me, because the amount of times I've had the phone hang up on me is ridiculous. I didn't even raise my voice or nothing like that. I like to talk over you the moment you start telling them facts. <laughs> um, so at some point in time, I just gave up on, you know, talking to them as a whole. And Adam Carpenter is one of the higher ups. So, you know, you could sit here and tell me, oh, you got to talk to right? You got to move up the chain. I have. I have. And even they have attitudes. 
almost ridiculous how unprofessional they are. People don't realize how Western Express is ran into you as he stepped foot into that company. If you have other brokers or distributors, like, for example, more in Salt, right? I went in there. I'm talking to the forklift drivers. Now, these are forklift drivers, even truck drivers, and they're sitting there and they're telling me, oh, I'm right? That's a bad company. Like, if you got people <laughs> telling you that your company is bad, leave, run, 100% run because that's a red flag like, you gave employees telling me that they don't like western express because western express always like to pay for the repairs on your truck i had like a, a what is it my brake valve was sticking or something like that and i had to get it fixed at a ta and it took them about three hours to do it because western express refused to pay for the repair so they don't realize what they put their drivers to, through and what they what their drivers sacrificed for them, for them to just basically give us attitudes and not even give us home time. So yeah, I do lose my lose my respect for a company the moment you start stepping on me like that. Mm. And in the beginning, I was doing everything that they said, everything. I was sacrificing my home time. At some point in time, I was going home every week. They said, oh, you want to make more money? You should stay out for two weeks at a time. Okay. Are you sure? Like, you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. But so I started staying out two weeks at a time. I picked up any load they wanted me to. Um, I was running recaps, things like that. And I didn't even want to run recaps. You know, they don't pay attention to your clock too much. So there were a lot of times they were sending me, in other words, what they call it is an impossible dispatch, where it's almost impossible for you to pick up that load with the amount of time you have on your clock. So there were times where they would tell me to PC it. Now, we all know that's illegal. You can't do that. You can't advance a load with PC. And if you don't know that as a rookie, because that's not something people just straight up tell you when you're in your training process, there's a lot of little things that they don't tell you. You know, you know they're making it seem like it's totally okay because you're hearing it from a DM. So the DM must know everything, right? The DM's mm-hmm. not going to get you in trouble. The DM don't give two craps about you or your license. You lose it, they replace your number. It don't matter. So, for the people that come at me about that one, listen, <laughs> y'all could do that. Y'all could stick with a company like that. Not me. Because, um, whoo, child, the things I had, with, I had patience with them. I did. I stayed with them for seven months. You can't tell me I wasn't patient. So for the second time that I deadheaded home, I knew the consequences. I knew they would take it out of my check. But guess what? The company that I'm with right now, they took me when I only had seven months of experience. You realize how rare that is for a privacy to accept you? They're based out of Wisconsin. It's a great company. And I run. Now, what I used to run compared to what I run now is a big, big difference. So what I used to run well, and I would only really get 1,000 miles a week. So that means that's about two loads. Really. And we're not talking OTR. They never wanted me to run OTR. I told them I wanted to. They said, if you want to run OTR, you got to stay out even longer. Yet there were other drivers that I was talking to and they said, you know, I run OTR and I only stay out two weeks at a time. So I don't know why they're telling you that. And that's also another thing. All the drivers have different experiences. It's all based on your DM. (laughs) You know, I always, I always say that, um, that your experience is not going to be the experience of other people. So my question is, mm-hmm. you you found this uh, company that brought you in at, you know, even at eight months and you run it the way you run it. How did you come across this company? So actually, <laughs> it was one of those actually really common moments where someone comes up to you in a truck stop and they're like, hey, where, where do you work? Like, you know, you work for Western Express. You trying to get out of that company? I could refer you over to this company, blah, blah, blah. Because I've had a lot of mega carriers do that to me. I don't know. I guess when they see Western Express, they're like, oh, you know, let's see if this person is a good driver and maybe I'll get a good referral bonus, right? And the referral bonus at this company is 3500 That's That's steep money. That's good money right there. <laughs> so with him telling me what he was telling me, I was like, you know, he's just another person trying to get me into a good company. I mean, a, a company for his, his own satisfaction. But I took his number because again, I was desperate. So I was taking everybody's numbers. I was like, bar none, say that. 
Either transport and say that. Who makes my coffee? Who makes my coffee? Will someone explain to me why I'm the worst day of my life? My coffee tastes like shit! Your coffee is normally made by Cato. Miss Transport, say that. You know, I'm taking everything. <laughs> and I'm doing research. This is the only company. Now, it's a small company. It's only 108 drivers. Um, and this is the only company where I searched them up and it was nothing but positive reviews. So that's one green flag. Then the person who referred me, it's not a company where you just apply online and, you know, call it a day like a regular mega carrier. No, you actually have to get referred from another driver in order to get into this company. So that's another thing. Um, they have benefits. They have this program called an ESOP program. It's like stock where you make extra money on top of a 401k. You can't ask for any more than that. I make 3,000. I mean, I do 3,000 miles per week. And that's like, <laughs> that's freaking amazing. Now, they'll run the hell out of you. But if you want to make money, listen, you go on. You get addicted to it. Um, but, yeah, this guy, you know, I thought he was selling me a dream. But we got to know each other. And he actually stuck it out with me. Shout out to him. It's a really good friend. Um, I'll say his name. His name is David. He's a great friend. Um, he stuck it out with me through Western Express the whole seven months because he wanted me. He met me in the second month of me being a Western Express. But he, they wanted me to have at least six months to seven months of experience for the, for the insurance to like kind of approve it. Um, usually they only take people that have two to three years of experience. But David was just like, hey, listen, this girl, Aja, this girl, Aja, like he was on their asses. Like, yo, listen, her six months is almost up. You ready to take her yet? Things like that. And we actually ended up becoming really great friends and I knew from that moment on, he introduced me to all the different people from this company. And they're practically like a family here. And, you know, they had nothing but positive to say about this company. If you have your workers who, who aren't even trying to refer you to the company, telling you that this company is good, you're going to make a lot of money. I mean, the only thing is you're going to run like hell. But I mean, if you want to do that, hey, um, you know, it's it's beautiful. It's great. I'm so happy here. It's not like anything I've ever experienced with any mega carriers. I got really, really, really lucky with them. Yes. Uh, yes, you did. It, it, it sounds that you got, uh, that you got lucky with that company. Shout out to that, to that gentleman and shout out to the company to give you, you know, to give you a chance. BCP transportation All right. based out of Wisconsin. All right. Shout out to BCT, BC, BCT. BC, <laughs> BCT Transportation out of Wisconsin. Shout out to them and shout out to the young man that uh that that you know that referred you and gave you the opportunity and a chance. Again, as a reflection on myself, listening to the conversation is it's like when I was with uh US US Express and had my issues with them. You know, you, uh, JNR Shrugal reached out to me and uh, they was like, yo, uh, you know, you, you kind of, kind of got, kind of, kind of got messed up with U.S. Express. We got you. <laughs> so <laughs> it was actually, it was actually a dispatcher that, that re I mean, not a dispatcher, but a recruiter that reached out to me. She was like, yo, I've seen your YouTube uh -huh. channel and. And all like that. Are you still driving for U.S. Express? I was like, no. Hey, you want to come great. over here to JNR Shrugal? I was like, sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, man, Aja, man. That I mean, this, 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 this is awesome, man. So, let's talk about um, let's talk about New York, man. You, you, you stay up in New York. What part of New York you stay up in? New York, New York, um, Long Island. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's so Shout on, out to Suffolk. <laughs> so on your home time, I, I, I need to know this. Uh Long Island, that's 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 part of the boroughs. I'm not fucking with that. <laughs> on not, your home time, are you are you are you taking the truck home? And if you are, where are you parking at? 
No, Long Island is not based out of the city. See, that's the thing. Everybody thinks New York is just strictly the city and upstate. So y'all don't know. There's this little section in between right next to Queens called Long Island. We have two counties, Nassau and Suffolk. I'm based out of Suffolk County. And if you ever heard of a little town called Bayshore Brentwood, yeah. So um, that's why it's not really known because a lot of those towns aren't popular in other words Mm -hmm. um we're kind of more known for negativity than anything okay um yeah it's like a lot of hood stuff things like that but like no now nowadays it's not like that at all you know people kind of over dramatize what happens in long island because believe me it's not like that it's i've never had a problem a day in my life there mind the business that's it right but um yeah with my truck well with this company um they always get me a little home because they have loads coming out of long island which is great i do have to go through the city in order to get home though i will say that i have to take the i-95 and bring it on to bring it past the rogs neck bridge and then onto the 495 which leads into queens and long island um so yeah that the traffic is always excuse my language but it's always a bitch to sit through but when you're from new york it's you're practically used to it. So it kind of goes by really fast for us. Um, and, you know, Long Island is a quiet area. For me, at least, it's, in a, it's a, I'm in a pretty good area. It's, it's quiet. So, you know, I park my truck right there and my trailer goes into like this little, I have this little street area that I park it on. So, I mean, yeah, it's decent. And I, I usually take a load home and then I deliver it when I come back out or I pick up a load in Long Island once I'm done with my home time and bring it back to Wisconsin. That's how our loads work. They come from our terminal or we're bringing it to the terminal. I think it's called swinger loads. I'm not too sure. Swing loads or something like that. Um, But yeah. As a rookie driver, man, and I know I know you mentioned um, Western Express had a whole lot of Northeast nodes. Like, what they, they told me that. They, they told me that if you can't drive the Northeast. We're we're not gonna be good for you. How was it how was it for you being a rookie driver? As a rookie driver, uh for the you know, for the eight or the seven months or the eight months or the five months that you've been with, you know, Western Express driving up in the Northeast, how was that for you? I, I know you being from the Northeast and everything, you kind of pretty used to traffic up there, but driving the semi <laughs> I, you can have all of that but uh, how how was it for you being a rookie driver driving up in those driving up in those areas i gotta tell you <laughs> my very first month of driving like barely knowing how to back at this point they sent me into queen's junction boulevard now, anybody that's from Queens Junction Boulevard knows damn well no semis belong on that street. <laughs> it's a street that's right between a mall and then across the street is a Jetro, Jetro cash place. That's where Western Express was delivering to. And your dock is basically the street, you know, and you got these cars going back and forth, back and forth. They don't stop for nothing. New Yorkers don't care. You can kill them. They won't care. Um, <laughs> and like, you know, they go back and forth, back and forth while you're backing. Um, and that was a wreck for me. I had a complete, like, I had to stay so calm because I was shitting my pants. Like I was shitting bricks <laughs> out there. Um, but I always told them, don't send me out to Brooklyn. That's just one of the spots you don't ever want to go to when it comes to the city. And there's actually a rule in New York City that no trucking companies follow. 53 footers do not belong out there, actually. Um, They're not supposed to be out there, which is why it's so small. That's why all the turns are there because no 53 footers should be making those turns to begin with. But trucking companies see a lot of money opportunities out there and they'll send them out there anyways, even if that means risking the whole trailer and truck getting graffitied or destroyed or possibly risking getting into a whole lawsuit with somebody hitting another car. Um, luckily for me, they never sent me out to Brooklyn, but I am used to it because for a good three months, I was constantly in all five bureaus with a straight truck, which is a little bit longer than a box truck. 
So, I mean, it's different bringing that out there. I know because it's shorter, turns are a lot, you know, smaller and things like that. But it's still a trip being in a commercial vehicle, being out there. It's very nerve wracking seeing all those people. You can't speed, forget about it. You might as well just go 10 to 15 miles per hour out there because if you speed, you risk hitting somebody. They just cross the street with no care in the world. They don't like trucks out there, so you finna get cursed out. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're just doing your job. They're going to curse you out. The drivers, everybody in the Northeast, I could say all drivers from Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, uh, going up into shoot, Virginia, West Virginia, they don't know how to drive. <laughs> they do not know how to drive. So being out here, and, you know, going OTR, like right now, currently, I'm in Minnesota. I just came from North Dakota. A breeze. A breeze. I've been through Texas. I've been through Wisconsin. Um, I've been to Chicago. Chicago is a trip. That Chicago three-way is not it. Like, that's probably the worst traffic I've ever had to sit in. That was three hours long. So, you know, Chicago's got it over New York when it comes to that traffic. I will say that. Because <laughs> our traffic... It goes, like, it keeps moving. I mean, yeah, get inching and everything, but, it, you know, it keeps moving. With Chicago, you just sitting and just waiting. <laughs> For when people are constantly cutting you off. You say you drove to, oh, yeah. have, have you drove to Colorado? Have you been through the mountains? Every day for the last 10 years, Loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee. Today she gives me a large black coffee, only it's got sugar in it. A lot of sugar. I just came back to complain. How you boys put those guns down? Have you been through uh, Colorado yet? Have you been through the mountains yet? Um, No, I'm waiting, though, because I'm one of those rare truckers who actually really enjoys those hills. Like, I be getting a kick out of them. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> and I know a lot of people are like, well, you're not going to be saying that when you go through Cali and you got to go to Colorado. And I'm like, listen, you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. I have a ball. <laughs> Aja, I want to I want to thank you. Thank you so, so much for coming on and uh, rocking out with me today. I really do appreciate it, man. I, I enjoy the conversation. I enjoy the mem going down memory lane with you and everything, man. Uh, I, I, I you, 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 you're a trucker in my book, even though you haven't been trucking for long, man. But I, I'll give you your props <laughs> that you, you know, with everything that I have listened to and everything I have learned about you today, man. Hey, you, 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 you're a real one. I'm gonna have to give you that. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And like, shout out to all the people out there who do give advice to rookies and take their time to get out their truck and help other people. Y'all, y'all real ones for real. We appreciate everything that y'all do. Ricky. Mm -mm. Mm, you told me in the, uh, you, you, you told me in the background that, uh, old schoolers need to keep their mouth shut and let oh, y'all no, no, no. no, new, uh, no, I didn't say that. Mm. <laughs> I said some of them, some of them, because there's a lot of like, there's a lot of old timers out there that are super negative and just really grumpy and have nothing better to do with their life and make assumptions of how people before they actually learn the full story, which mm -hmm. is insane to me. And they just sit there, and they go with their little Twitter fingers and they're like, oh, you need to do this. And oh, Dak report this. And oh, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be like, I've had people come under my comments on with saying some really nasty, unnecessary things. Like you shouldn't be a trucker. You need to find a different career. Yeah, you're really a rookie, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, we all learning every single day. Rules change every single day. The trucking world has changed. I don't think they realize that. The DAC report thing, they don't even look at that crap anymore. I promise you they don't. They're so desperate to have new drivers. And there are new drivers flooding in all the time. When you're going through that whole training process, you see hundreds of new drivers coming in. So once you're into your next step, there's more, there's like 20 more other drivers that are stepping in to go do their classes next. It's crazy. But Western, I, they didn't care that I left. They replaced me with a heartbeat. <laughs> Aja, you got to agree. You you got to agree. And I, you know, you know, being a TikToker yourself, you got to agree that there is a lot of garbage 
TikTok drivers out there, though. For real, for real. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not the type. See, I'm very to myself. And honestly, I never expected me to actually go viral. Like, I made TikTok for the fun of it. You know, whatever little rookies possibly slip past my, my, my video. And they're like, oh, wow, that's really helpful. You know, that's what I do it for. I do it really for them. And I do it for other truck drivers that maybe want to be friends or anything like that. But as for the people that take time to actually sit there and comment on the other people's videos and share their negative opinions, y'all can keep it to yourself because I promise I don't care. <laughs> like, I really don't. I barely respond to them. Um, the people that actually go above and beyond to make videos about it too, because I do get reply videos here and there. I get it. Some of the things that I say are controversial, but like, that's the thing. They like to play sheep. I don't play sheep. I'm a leader. I'm not a follower. So I won't sit there and follow everything that a company tells me when I know it's dead wrong. At the end of the day, we're all human. And I think y'all forgot y'all are the ones risking your lives. Y'all are the one out here putting in that work. So how are you going to let somebody behind a computer screen tell you what you should and should not do? That's insane to me. Facts. Well, I should again thank you for your time, man. I know you got to go ahead and get ready to lay it down and get ready for your three o'clock. Same here. I got to get up at Back four. But uh, it's <laughs> it's great meeting you. Uh, let's uh, let's let's catch back up in about uh in about uh two three months, man, to see you know see if the company is still you know companying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh let's absolutely. do that. Uh you got a you got a follower. Uh you definitely got a follower now. Where you been you you yeah, mentioned you you mentioned in the background and I wanted to, you know, comment on this, but I've been following you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been I, I've been watching all your I've been, <laughs> Yeah, I, I've been watching your videos for a while. And when I when I hit the check mark, of course. I, I'm I'm not t I'm I'm not a fan of TikTok. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I TikTok for me is content. You know, that's that's what TikTok is for me. But I uh I um uh, I hit the check mark. I try to reach out to, you know, reach out to people and you know, bring them on and talk about, you know, their experience and all like that. But you can't do that unless both of us is following each other. And it's kind of difficult right. because I know, especially for you guys, when somebody follow you, not everybody follows back. You know, you, 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 you just be great with the, oh, okay, I got to follow. Cool. But in order to right. conversate with one another, you probably had to go in the, in the, in the comment session. And then TikTok has a bad habit of, erasing comments if they deem the comment you know so so that's what i did that's no, what i did what i did mm -hmm. every time i do a, a reaction video to you know the tiktokers right. and all like that i'll 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 do the 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 thumbnail i uploaded the tiktok you know put some music behind it and then i and then i mentioned you in that and that's how to let you know that I have a reaction video on the video. So I'm glad that uh, yeah, just, I'm definitely threw me off because I thought yeah. it was going to be like a neg negative video. I was ready for it. I was like, oh, God. Nah, <laughs> man. Uh -uh. When, you was, when you was talking about your experience, I, I'm over here like, bro, like, Prime, what's going on with you guys? Like, what's up with all these badass trainers man like the one the the one uh video that i that i had added to the video uh with yours you know she went through like she's on her like fourth trainer yeah. Mm -hmm. like yeah i mean like you gotta understand they're so short on trainers because nobody wants to be a trainer like western was dying for me to be a trainer prime once you're like about six months into driving they ask you to be a trainer so they ask anybody, anybody under the sun, and they sell you a dream by saying you're going to get paid extra this plus the uh, plus, plus the miles that the other driver is doing, the training is doing. So once they tell you that, it's like, oh, word, money. You know, it's a big money game. That's all it is. So, you know, it don't even matter if you're a terrible driver. You know, as long as you're sitting in that truck with another person, you practically making money off of them. You don't really technically have to teach them anything, and they'll never know that. And if they stick it out, that's on them. 
Facts. But like, that's just the sad truth of it. It is. It is. Truth. It is the sad truth of that. All right, Aja, we're we'll going ahead and get. Um, how about a smoothie? What's in that? Smoothie's a juice drink. We want coffee. Buddy, relax. So, Aja, thank you very much for coming on, man. Go ahead and shout out your uh your social media so that everybody can get with you. Where y'all should follow me on TikTok. You know, it's I'm not I'm just gonna say it's A J A L E E B A R A D J I. You know, and you could run that back if you can't spell it. Um, but yeah, y'all should follow my content on TikTok. It's basically a series of struggles of a rookie trucker. And, you know, I just run down the basic things that a rookie should know about trucking and also just extra additional content in there about commentary on different things that I learned in the trucking world as well. Um, and yeah, you know, <laughs> and shout out to all the people out there who have helped me with all my trucking needs who first got me into trucking and everything shout out to my brother tim shout out to david shout out to edwin who's a hot shotter who used to be a trucker who's going back to being a trucker he's a real one and yeah and shout out to all the truckers you know y'all be safe out there for real all right all right lockout men here with uh aja you know the the the, the real one that that's the real veteran rookie <laughs> Rookie veteran already, <laughs> already. Again, thank you very much for being part of the community, man. Thank you for coming on and rocking out with me. And, and again, man, we 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 together. We here. My radio, believe me, I like it loud. I'm the man with the box that can rock the crowd. Walking down the street to the hardcore beat while my JVC vibrates the car through the 